Yeah. So I, I put I put on like regular whatever clothes, and then I. Yeah, he opens the door while you're changing. His... Yeah. Behave yourself, please. I'm trying to cast a spell on this bow. Ah, but it smells like beer in here. Yeah. You, s- I, uh, you smell like an alcoholic. Actually, bar. will I? Would I be able to ask one of them to like clean my armor? Or, like, would there be someone here since it's? Are you of course. Yeah. There, yeah. There's like room service and shit. I mean, yeah. if you ask them to so do I, laundry, maybe sure. there's like a bell or something I can ring. I, uh, or like some sort of way to get. Yeah, I just. It's not gonna be hard to get a hold of some sort of maid or a servant. Yeah, I think I'm right. But like, the first thing I do is I take my armor off, put on my normal clothes. Give my armor to like a maid or someone and say, please wash this. Uh, I was assuming you were wearing, uh, probably if you did, I don't know. I was assuming you were wearing your nicest clothes to this. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah, that's right. Never mind. I wasn't wearing my armor. I had nice clothes. I was like, please, uh, please wash these. These are family, family, uh, like these have been passed down to me from my my mother. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're very important to me, which makes me even more stern glance or sick. And then I put on, yeah, I have my, now I just have, like, common clothes on, like, almost, like, probably night, like, what I'd sleep in, just, like, normal crap. So, um, anyway, I start unwrapping the bow without touching it. I'm just trying to unwrap it. And it's, like, laying on my bed. Mm-hmm. Like, like imagine, like, a, a, like, a thing, like, a giant rug, kind of. It's on top of the rug. It's just, like. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, it's laid out. You unfold it, and, and there it is. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Damien's going to cast a tech magic. Uh, yeah. Silafil Mathialis. And, uh... Yeah. I guess I do he, the same. He looks at it and says, Well, well. This is... A rather powerful magical artifact, indeed. Yeah, I, I have I cast it as well. What uh... it is emanating a powerful magical aura. All right, which is the second highest possible. Yeah, not overwhelming, but powerful. Yes, indeed. We're not. We're not. We don't have freaking like legendary items over here. <laughs> uh, no. not yet. Um, I nod my head. I'm like, yes, it's uh. Notice it's it has a uh, changes color slightly. It's very, uh, very uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <sighs> it starts with an O, I believe. Uh, I don't know. But I'm yeah, honest. he no. He, he's, I mean, yeah, uh, but yeah. Goes but, to inspect it and says, ah, "Where? I don't see it." <clears throat> so you don't see like. No. What? Like I start pointing around, like yeah, like look, look at it. is is it kind of like faintly like changing, like or no, no, no. no. I'm like, hmm. You must have been mistaken. Yeah, I say, hmm. I must. Yeah, it's weird. Hmm. Can I shake it off? Like, well. At any rate, uh, yes, I do believe this could be what you're looking for. I will, I will double check on the morrow. I'll yeah. memorize and identify spell. Um, and then he goes to say something, he turns to look at you, Orsic, and he says, Whoa, whoa, well, <laughs> you have uh, quite the weapon there yourself, Master Dwarf. <laughs> I, uh, whoa. whoa. I, uh, look at the flag and I'm just like, I do? <laughs> what, what did. No, no, no. You say. Yes, really? that, that's magical as well. I'm referring to your weapon, the the battle hammer. I look around it, take it off my back. You see it too, Bahari. So like the Slow way down. magic glows ah. is that it glows outwards, and the stronger it is, the stronger the emanation of you know like the blue colored yeah. hue. And so you've only seen a um, overwhelming magical aura once, and it was blinding. So, oh, uh, powerful is still very, very obvious. It's like, whoa, like you know, it's it's very yeah. obvious to someone who's detecting magic. So he is overwhelming. No, it's a powerful one as well. But I'm just saying, I'm trying to give you like a scale. So both okay. of you, yeah. it's still impressive. Powerful yeah. is still quite impressive. Powerful is like looking really at... makes it 
Like, because because overwhelming is literally blinding. Like it's like, it's like the sun. at the sun. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And overwhelming. Then, powerful is still like it's like looking, you know, at the kind of light bulb here. I can do it, but it's like, ah damn. Yeah. It's really quite powerful. You kinda of look at it your peripherals, right? Um And it just like really takes up a lot of space. You can like it's that's how it is if you're looking at the center of the, the item. You yeah. can kind of like look at the side glows and stuff, it's not a problem, but yeah. Well, I, Alrighty. I take the mace off my back and I'm like, you might want to do that twice for tomorrow there, Damien. Just like, kinda gently, lightly swing it around. Not like to hit anybody or anything. Just uh, see how it feels in my hands. I haven't really had a chance to use this weapon yet. So, Identifying magical artifacts is very taxing. I don't know if I have the energy to do it twice. And Orsic, you can recall being told something like that once before from Malachi, who mentioned that mm -hmm. it's actually very taxing on a wizard. Some of them pass out from identifying items. Depends on how constitutionally strong they are. I remember in 2E, you got freaking, you were out for like a whole 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> It's not a restriction in 5e, but fuck you. I'm saying it is. I think it's very, very taxing on a wizard to identify a magical yeah, artifact. Yeah, that's fine. It is. Yeah. It's okay. We have time, Damien. I'm... I'm becoming patient in my older age, Damien. I just, like, slap him, like, shut the... No, you're not. <laughs> well, then. Uh, I think I will retire for the evening. Like... Should I name that him? I'm like, get out, Orsic. <laughs> yeah, it smells too much like beer in here. I'm going to go pass out, too. <laughs> I close my door. <laughs> go to sleep. Okay. So, I think we'll skip to the next day unless there's something that everybody wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that puts us at the 11th of Frostwane. Um, and you guys did both do your monthly it's expenses, ice right? No, it's Frostwane. Really certain it is ice hell ice hell comes after uh no but we already been through ice hell there was a, yep you guys went we, we over did. two weeks just yeah. in this particular city so yes. we are now at it was, it was deep winter when we when we started that and then we did two weeks so it should be ice hell now just trust me i i'm keeping track of these things so uh, yep. So we like completely skipped Ice Owl? I don't think that we went. We, no, we didn't skip it. I don't think so. Are you sure it's Ice Owl? I, I have it written I, down I, as Frostwing. I mean, I'd love it. Frostwing. Frostwing. No, because we, we did Deep Winter. It was. Last session started Deep Winter on the 26th of Deep Winter. And then we got back, and then we did two weeks to restore the city and collapse all the entrances, that, you know, all the stuff. So we did two weeks, so 14 days. It was Ice Hollow the 10th was the day of the party. Unless you want to say it was two months, I'm fine with that. We can say it's like the 26th of Frostwing. We don't got to worry about blizzards anymore. Yes. Um. So you have it written down as Ice Howl. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, I have it written down a month ahead of that. Um... Did you just skip Ice Howl? Go from Deep Winter? You must have just, like... I don't know. Just, yeah, not looked at Ice Howl or something. No, because Heralds of Darkness is on the 5th of Deep Winter. We're way ahead of them by now. Yeah, we are quite a bit because of uh, 
Yeah. yeah, we're we're a month ahead of that then. Should be well over a month. We, I mean, the travel all the way to the mountains, passing through the mountains alone, is eight days. Yeah. Then you spent time, you know, doing Belaga stuff, Volbrunder stuff. You had traveled to Volbrunder. You spent two weeks there, over two weeks, probably closer to 18, 19 days. Yeah. So there's no way we're still in ice hell. I mean, so we. Uh, let's see. We ended the episode. We ended in Stone's End. Stone's End was Deep Winter the 18th. Okay. And then. We left. Yeah, so we left Stone's End on the 18th. And then. Um, let's see. We then started the next one. The 18th of what? Of Deep Winter. So, okay. 18th of Deep Winter. Um, let's see. Then it takes you eight days to get through the mountains. Yep. And then, yeah. So, then we're at the 24th. And then... Let's see, and then we... And then you travel third... Uh, it was like a day and a half. Yeah, maybe like two days. To the city. Yep. Um, and then you I, did... I have us... I actually have us... Going to the city on the 22nd. Okay. So okay, so so I guess that it is ice hall then, all things considered, because like fourteen days, plus everything else that you did, wouldn't put us at Frostbane. But I don't know how I got us to Frostbane then. Uh, I mean, we could say it was a month. I'm usually pretty good about keeping this information up to date. I mean, that's why literally every time we say we take a long rest for the night, I cross off a number and write the next number in. The top of every page has dates on it for everything. Mm -hmm. So we got like... Okay, just... Dates. Dates. And we're on the 10th. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It'll be Ice Howl then. It's the... Yeah, I think that's correct. So... It'll be the 11th of Ice Howl, then. Um, spent way too much time on that. Um, so, you guys wake up and... Feel hungover as hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you get back together at some point. Let me know if there's something you want to do, because I'm just going to keep moving. Yeah. Um, keep moving. Damien's going to detect, or he's going to, I need to change his ready spells. Uh, so he's going to unmemorize magic missile. Magic missile! Learn identify. And, okay. So, he casts identify. I need to know, or like, are you going to try and convince him to cast it on yours first? Or is like, are you just gonna let him like Fahari run the show here? Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'll mention to him that, uh, you know, I've got a great and powerful uh, mace from or Warhammer from uh, from Vada that uh, perhaps is of more importance. But then I, 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 so how does this does this look different to me then than it did to Fahari? Does it just look red like a red bow to me? No, it's like a yeah, it's a or does it does it kind of shift the color? And it's a pinch red bow with yeah. subtle black twisting hues uh -huh. to it. Um, so I kind of stop when I'm like attempting to convince him to do it to, to um, identify my warhammer, mm -hmm. and 
I cast Detect Evil on it. Ooh. Oh, sweet. I didn't yeah, even know you had that. Nice. That comes from being a paladin, right? Yeah. Oh, nice little that's paladin. sick. Ooh, ooh, I didn't think about this. I, I like look at it and I'm like, in fact, it just feels yeah. off, you know? <laughs> Can't you sense evil since you're a paladin? That's kind of what he's doing. Yeah. Right? I thought you could just passively sense evil. Uh, it is, well, yeah, it's divine sense, isn't it? Yeah. Um, no, it's but not... It's not, that's not passive. He has to actually focus on that. Yeah. Time yeah, I still have to, like... Because I think you have to do it. Like... Not items. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's a person. Yes. Um... Yeah, any celestial fiend or undead within sixty feet of you. Yeah. Uh, what does it say about detect evil though? Oh well, I I don't actually have detect evil as a spell. Isn't that, I thought so, like I was no alignment? Like Wouldn't sense. it be like no alignment or whatever? Because I don't. That's what yeah. I was. That's what I thought too. But you have. Oh, so it's yeah. Not I, that. I don't. I don't have. I was thinking divine sense. Okay. So, so you're oh. the one you have is only creatures though. Yeah, like creatures weapons or trees or something. I shit. mean, but it, I, is this celestial? I mean, I don't know. Like, is this living? Yeah, yeah, is it alive? Like, I don't. So, you, if you attempt to that, you will not get a presence of any okay. sort of evil creatures near you. Yeah. Right. This because... is an inanimate object. Yeah. God dang it. Um. Level one noob. Yeah, because like I don't actually get spells until second level, correct? That's what. Yes. The... Correct. How do you so, level yeah. up as a dual class? Do you split up the XP or is it no? No. So, so every time like, he levels, he chooses yeah. which class he wants to put. A so level like in. last session, I hit level seven as a character. So I'm a I'm still a sixth level barbarian, but I'm a first level paladin now. So could so, you be level twentieth both? No. No. You can no? be like level sixteen and level four. He will. Yeah. He'll never be a level, level 20, twenty anything. Yeah. If he's multiclassed. There. Anyway. So, so I can't I don't detect even evil. I just divine sense on that shit. I well, maybe you do do it because you're still unfamiliar with your new found powers. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I like look at it, like try to see if see any evil. Because I mean, I I don't imagine that like I know how to use my abilities yet. You know, I just fucking. I mean, you can role play it that you're discovering them, but according to rules as written, you immediately understand the abilities you yeah. have at your disposal. Well, but yeah. we can we can role play that you know, this is like your first time casting it, so you're not entirely yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I've not used it, so I'm just like, I want to see if it's evil. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't tell. Yeah, and you don't, yeah, you don't necessarily anyway. get a reading yes or no. Yeah, I just, I just see it for what it's, it's like, like a, it's like a non-reading. And so I'm like, yeah, I mean, my hammer obviously is more important than her mm -hmm. bow. Look at that thing. It's a bow. Uh, you know what it does. All right, sorry. So he cast. No, he's, he, uh, Orsic is convincing him that <laughs> his hammer is worth identifying first. I say, uh, listen, Damien. I need to know. I was told that this bow is, is. I don't know if curse is the right word, but some sort of evil. I don't. I don't know if it was evil, but they seemed a little spooked about it. So I think it's better to know about this first instead of. We know that. I need to know that I can. Uh, I need to know that I can wield this without hurting me or the party. Okay. Very well. It seems that has, a paladin's no. weapon is not likely to cause us harm. Yeah. Has Vahari told us, like, have you told us a story, like, what, what you went through to go get it? She hasn't said shit. Yeah. She, I mean, I said it went if, into the... the, the, the... Yeah, you, yeah Vahari's going to have to role play that out if she yeah. wants to tell you guys what they but, told But you. you haven't told us, like, all the shit about, like... Other dwarves are like, oh, I don't know. You should... I'll say they You can touch it. it. We're not going in there. So, There's yeah. a chance you might have heard about it, though. Why don't you roll me a history check? 
Yeah. yeah I mean, cool. he whoever this creature is that wielded it at one point did come through Belagost. It was like 200 years ago. Hold it. Before I was born. Uh, you don't have a history proficiency? Nope. At all? Okay. Um, dog. I think you've heard of it. Hmm. Uh, but you can't really recall much about the specifics. Like, you recall hearing, like, if they she says something about... Like, no, name, maybe? I don't think it was ever named. You okay. know, these superstitious dwarven geomancers can call it whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, it's uh, one of those things where you heard I, a story about a guy? rider with a bow uh, who came through and murdered a bunch of people at one point. And uh, you can make I the connections. I remember the legend of the great murder hobo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you, you should identify. Yeah, you should identify that first. I mean, it's probably dangerous. <sighs> it's probably the, the stories say that uh, it was probably the weapon. So I don't want okay. Vahari becoming the murder hobo for the party. So I mean, it's probably it's probably best for our party if you go ahead, do your thing. I, I'll, I'll wait till next week. It's cool. I mean, I'll wait okay. a couple of days. It's for the best game. Um, yes. So, before he does that, he says, uh, oh, uh, by the way, before I went to bed last night, I uh, spoke with Aresh Kegel once more about our situation here uh -huh. in the Thunder. And... Well, we should uh, make our way back to Stone's End post-haste. Uh, she is sending Morden, the Dimensionalist, to meet with us. Ah, Morden. Ah, it's been a while. It's been a little minute. It's been a while. It's a, it's a nice fellow. Come yes, but you... seem he's grown in power since the last time we spoke to him. I... Yes, I, I know that you're not too familiar with magical dimensions. I'd it's say, like, pulling out of my butt, like, I have dimensions, no but the powers therein. Yes, he is. Well, it was claimed that he has intentions to teleport us back to Acheron. Hmm. That would be more than. That'd be better than. A wizard of that walk. capability is, well. He is. I am. That is far beyond my own abilities. Well, I have much to learn from him. He's probably one of the more pleasant Asphodians I've met in my years. Quite is an ingenious fellow, to be sure. Well, so tomorrow then? Are we heading out tomorrow? I think that would be best. It's going okay. to take us some time to get there. Indeed. Indeed. Because we have dropped our horses in Stone's End. Yes. So are we going back underground? <laughs> yes. Well, that is up to the dwarf. I, I don't mean, know that. Done once, you know. Oh, but that that brings up another point. I believe I've hit a bit of an epiphany on my spellcraft. Nothing like Morden, of course, but I believe I am comfortable enough with casting invisibility that I can cloak all of us at once. Have you, you have learned how to do that. Yes. A spell known to powerful wizards called Greater Invisibility. Sounds So, great. I would think underground passage is significantly better. safer than last time, yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. Face faster as well, so. Should still be quiet. Though. Of course, minimal talking. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> yes. All right. So that's good. We should, we should be able to get through there. Maybe a little faster than last time, but maybe tie ourselves to a rope this time <laughs> instead of just holding on. Don't want to get lost out There's there. There's still the problem of requiring some sort of <laughs> light, but I can cantrip spell 
light as necessary. Mm -hmm. It will draw attention. Invisible creatures who can have light cast upon an object still shed light. Yes, of course. Mm. Um. Well, when that uh, time comes, we'll figure it out. So, indeed. So, should I identify the bow? Yes, let's let's right. yes, let's do this. Okay. Rush Giggle had nothing else to say, right? Uh, 20, 20 words, I'd say yes. 20 words, but... Yes, 20 words. Uh, it was enough for her to relay that we need to meet up with Morden in Stone's End uh, as soon as possible. I believe he's already left. So we should meet him there about the same time. Uh, give or take. Okay, we have about 10 days to get there. So... Yeah. Uh, he lays out all of his tools and uh, pulls out a, a rather beautiful and large pearl and begins the incantation. Uh, your your bow is on the... I guess you guys are doing it like over the, the foot of your bed or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I just, I'm on the ground crisscross, just kind of kind of like mm -hmm. like this, kind of like like, uh, mm -hmm. like just in thought, like about well, what's going to happen. Does it take a while for it to... Takes him a minute. Yeah. Uh, and all of the material components kind of levitate off the air as he's uh, mumbling words in the language of magic that you are unfamiliar with. Um, and waving his hands and uh, he's focusing in on this bow. And he seems to be intensely uh, f kind of like zoned in on it, like studying it. Like almost like he's reading a book and then, yeah. and then he jumps back and falls on his ass, screaming. Screaming. Roll, like, yeah, like, oh! Ah! Yeah, something like that. Oh, God. Um. All right, sweet. I, I Damien passes his saving throw for whatever he needed to pass. Oh, the soul doesn't get absorbed. No, it does not get absorbed. Mm -hmm. Um. And he, his eyes go wide, and he's like backed up as far away from the thing as possible. And like, uh, panicked, kind of like deep breaths, you know. Like, yeah. Like he's not entirely sure what the fuck he just saw or heard or whatever it was. Immediate reactions? I have jumped to his side and I don't know what I'm doing there, but I've jumped to his side. He's still alive if you're mm -hmm. checking no, his no, balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he said that he I don't know if you. Uh, yeah. He's he's alive and standing there panicked, right? I'm like, he's just sitting there like, and I like, yeah. I'm like, I, like touching his shoulder. I'm like, it's kind of starting to beat on his brow. Yeah. Are you okay? What's wrong? Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine. Help me up. Help me up. I like pull him up under his, under his arm. You know. I saw I I I saw uh, no what, what did I where was I I saw I you it's powerful Bahari powerful indeed is it uh, Yeah I think so but I he kind of like gets a little bit uncomfortably close to you. He says, I heard laughter. Laughter. Horrible laughter. What do you mean? I, that's, that's all I, I, all I saw. It's all I heard. Laughter. I, 
I, I, I, I, I don't think I can go through with the spell. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I won't. And he leaves, like just hastily just exits. Out. Yeah. I <laughs> like looking at our sick like. Oh my god. Uh. Something tells me, Vahari, you should put it back. Something tells me that I'm not going to use this bow until. <sighs> until we see a rush giggle. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone knows about frickin' demon magic, then that. that Indeed. The demon herself should know. Indeed. That may be intelligent. Whether. I mean, this is what Vahari thinks, you know, whether or not whatever has happened is already set in set in its uh, c uh, cycle of like yeah Harry believes that you know she had a cloak on it so yeah sweet uh, and w I mean this is the beginning of a fresh day so what are your plans uh, well I'm gonna give uh, Damien some time Mm -hmm. Perhaps I'm gonna go see the. Uh, I'm gonna go see Coldrick Fury Forge if I can. Okay. You absolutely can. You go to gain an audience with him, uh, and they are very busy, as as you know, the repairs and uh, restrictions uh, of the city are underway. But uh, he makes time for you. Um, I tell him I'll make it quick. Have no mm -hmm. worries. Um, yeah, and I just uh, so upon seeing him, I greet him. I uh, well I met. Know, well, thank you for your hospitality and uh, all of your great gifts. Um, we will probably be setting off tomorrow. We will be. Heading back to a rush kegel to report how things have gone here. <clears throat> and, uh. You know, we hope that, uh. I hope that we could bring some sort of token of good faith back to her. You know, to be the communicators of this negotiation, I suppose. I thought we already made. Our position clear, Master Dwarf. Yes. I did. The token is on their end. They are going to come and help us reclaim our cities as a token of good faith, of the alliance they're proposing. Indeed. And, uh, all I'm, all I'm asking is, uh, you know, like, a letter of of your intent and you know I'll be the court courier of this letter you know I'm not I'm not asking for I don't know riches or whatever to bring them but I'm just asking for a token of a letter of, of scribe he yells and young dwarf who barely has a couple whiskers on his beard comes scrambling over with uh, pen and parchment or a quill and parchment, sorry. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, yeah, he he vocalizes some sort of message for the scribe to write down uh, and then stamps, uh, stamps his thing on you know his, his seal of approval and then says make sure that uh, the other kings uh, seal this as well and then bring it back to this here Orsic battle hammer. He said, Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. <laughs> right away, sir. Scurries off to and, uh, make sure the other kings Come sign in, sir. it. Yes. And uh, while I have your audience. Mm hmm. Uh, I'm just curious if you've any idea what uh, Vodok's Warhammer here can do. 
I don't. I don't. Out of game. I don't. I don't believe we talked. I asked him about this yet, right? No, you haven't. Because I figured that you, aside from Vodak himself, of course, would know more than anybody what this, what he, what his weapon was capable of. I, I was with him through all but the end. When the worst hit, I saw his great strength, and I saw the weapon's emanations. I don't consider myself magically inclined, but Indeed. one notices a series of patterns. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. did seem to like to glow whenever we were in trouble. Perhaps there's something to that. Indeed. Uh, I mean, looking back, it, it was glowing, right, when we were at the portal. I'm assuming it was glowing brightly. Um, like when yes, it was. Um, yeah, yeah. No, it was. I'm just... Yeah. Sometimes I wonder about, like, when I should make you roll for, like... Intelligence checks, yeah, but I think you can right. remember because it's such an important thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can remember that it would typically start to glow whenever um, danger was near, and you also recall that after he entered the portal, it stopped glowing. Mm -hmm. That's all you can make heads or tails of. So I, I nod and agree with him that sure it glowed. I, I recall that it was not the most present thing on my mind. Of course, while I was getting my mind, it's one of those things mind. that's really obvious, though. Like think yeah, Lord yeah, of the yeah. Rings with Sting, where it's like yeah. shh, you know, like oh shit, what the fuck? And then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, twenty skeletons. Oh, all of a sudden, my mind is being torn apart by this mind flare. So I suddenly quit caring about the thing glowing, and I'm just fighting for my life. But it happened but, every time. Like but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nearing any sort of danger, it's it was, it's very it's like you know how Frodo's was like really mm -hmm. obvious. Mm -hmm. and okay. He's like, well, what the fuck? And uh, so with that, uh, we will be off. I hope to see you again soon. We'll be heading out back through the mountain tomorrow to uh, head back to Acheron. I will make sure that the Witch Queen uh, gets your message. Aye, and make sure you don't die. Those, uh, the mountain passes are treacherous. Mm, now, they are. More than ever. We already came through them once. So, it is not something I necessarily look forward to doing often. I fear that it may be some time before they're safe again. As if they were ever safe. Mm. But they were safe. He nods upon grimly. <laughs> Alright, so I guess you're gonna just wait like an hour before the scribe comes back to you. Yeah. He has to go and find the other guys and yeah, he eventually comes back with a rolled up and sealed piece of parchment. It's like sealed three times, right? Well, the seals are inside, but it's yeah. rolled up, and then it's also sealed, like stamped shut. Yeah. So you're assuming that they signed it. He tells you they did, but... Mm -hmm. Okay. And cool. I take the letter, cram okay. it in my pocket, all wrinkled up. Just kidding. Okay. I don't wrinkle it up. I make sure it stays nice and pristine. All right, yeah, you can add to your character sheet that you have that, uh, just so we don't forget. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, the boy heads off if you give him the go ahead. Yep. All right, um, Vary, what are you doing today? Um, making sure that Damien's all right and just kind of getting prepped to leave. So you go back to his room eventually and yeah. check on him. Make sure everything's all right with him. <sighs> yes, I'm fine. I've. Hmm. 
only identified a handful of magical items over my career, but I've never felt energy so foul in my life. <laughs> it was almost maddening. I had to get it out of my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't maintain my identification spell. All right. Yes, I'm thinking I'm just going to take this back to Arishka, y'all. To have her <clears throat> look it over. Because I'm not... Unless this is... if I, Unless I'm able to wield this without causing harm to myself. I, You know, within reason. I will most likely just... I don't know. Either way, it's a good find. The, um... I mean, yeah. The thing about it for Vahari is that you may be loath to try using a weapon like this, but you're also quite certain this is your only chance to actually get a bow for this gift that Ereshkigal Kegel claims to be wanting to impose upon you. You don't have a bow that means anything to you outside of this within your family or elsewhere like you have a a family long sword yeah but that's like there's no way i'd be able to this is, this is it like this is the bow that yeah. would mean something to you and and I so if i'm you, like i really like it i'm it, like yeah. it's so bad so you could you could still get you know something else um but i think that is why vahari is even entertaining the idea of using yeah. this if it was like any other time, I'd be like, I'm not even gonna mess with this thing. I don't want to go insane. Um, yeah. Cool. And on that note, I just need to know what you guys are planning to. Are you gonna just leave the next day? Are you gonna like prepare yeah. today and hang out? Yeah, I suppose so. Okay. Also, I completed um, my short-term goal. You want to message me or just say what it was? I was to identify the bow. Um. Okay. That was a short-term goal that you learned last week. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. You're level seven, right? Yeah. So one session, quick uh, or easy. What are we calling them? Goals. Short yeah, term but goal. like what, it's a short term goal. Yeah. So one session, short term. Uh, what is one hundred and seventy five experience? Okay. Extra for you. So go ahead and add that now. Uh, and please send me another short-term goal. All right. Whenever you're ready, whenever you know it. Um, so I'm going to flip to the next day, unless there's something you guys want to do. 12th of Ice Howl. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. 125, and... you said? Yes. Um... So, Orsic, are I mean, when you guys come back together, are you gonna ask him to identify your weapon now? Um, I'm going to ask him if he feels ready. Yes, I want to know if Damien feel ready to identify yet another weapon before we set out. <sighs> Else, he kind of shakes the jitters off. And, <sighs> yes, I I, think... I feel this one won't be as. Painful. Yes, I think that the paladin's hammer is less likely to attempt to do whatever that thing attempted to Perhaps do. Perhaps it'll me. make you feel more enlightened, even, Damien. So we go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, identifying the hammer. And. Okay. Yep. 
Okay, so... He learns that... The battle hammer... So it's a two-handed weapon, just so you know. Mm -hmm. This is a, a custom kind of weapon uh, that does... I mean, he can tell you, like... So it's a two-handed battle hammer yeah. that deals 1d12 damage stock. And uh, obviously with yeah, bonuses. I guess um, I should fill all that stuff out real quick because we didn't fill it out last week because you did not want to tell me. So No, no, no. I already added this stuff to your, your in-game character. Yeah, yeah. I'm filling it out I... on, my, on my personal okay. character. So, so the hammer deals 1d12 stock damage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's two-handed, which means it's a heavy weapon. So yeah. a small creature like a gnome cannot wield it. Hmm. Um, you can still attack twice per round with it as any other weapon. Mm -hmm. um, it is a plus two weapon, plus two to attack rolls and damage rolls. Oh wow! So, so my um, attack bonus is plus eight. Yep, and it's plus two, whatever bonus. it was already, and then plus two more damage so on top D12 of it. So plus five bludgeoning and damage, I'm assuming. It's bludgeoning damage, yes. And the hammer glows whenever danger is near. Because of this, you and any party member within 30 feet can never be surprised in combat ever again. Uh, like an ambush is set up of, you know, mm -hmm. fucking orcs or some shit, you will know immediately it'll start glowing yes. Um, yes. and the weapon magically awakens its wielder from non-magical sleep if enemies approach oh my God. bro as long as you're holding it it will shake awake yeah uh, yep not only damien's tiny hop but down and hammer yep so you can never be surprised in combat and it will always wake you up if some damage uh enemies are coming to close upon you. Mm. Nice. Yep. Pretty Got a cupcake with that pistachio on it. Oh. Pistachio sauce. I'm not a huge fan of pistachios. So good. Um. I just. Yeah, he tells you that in game. You know, he's like yeah. describing um, all the intricate magical details mm -hmm. about this hammer. Uh, he tells you um, the properties. He tells you how to use the properties. Um, he tells you the hammer requires attunement. Mm hmm it and i don't think you've done that yet i mean i haven't like outright said it yeah. but, you know. um, so. um so yeah if you don't attune to the hammer uh you won't gain like the properties mm -hmm. of being awoken and sleep and shit like that so you will need to like sit with it for an hour and really just kind of like focus on it and get a feel for it in your mind and all yeah. that kind of stuff um, and he describes attunement to you. Uh, I assume your character understands that, but he kind of goes over it once yeah. again and tells you, uh, you don't need to worry about, you know, like an orc picking this shit up. It won't work because it's attuned to you. Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it would conceivably work for him if he managed to steal it and then attune to it by mm -hmm. you know, taking an hour with it himself. You would lose attunement, but it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and he tells you uh, yeah he tells you the magical school uh, properties of it some sort of I don't I don't know what school of magic it is like some sort of yeah I think it's like the uh, let me see no it's some sort of enchant. I think it's enchantment school, hmm. something like that. Uh, so, anyway, that doesn't mean much to you, but so, he just gives you the rough once over for your weapon. So it's not the gods, like 
God's God's could now. God's could have conceivably casted an enchantment oh. on a normal hammer. Okay. Um. But yeah, he just gives you the once over of it and closes his book and says, "Okay, well, if that satisfies uh, if that satisfies your curiosity, I think we should leave. Yes. Orden, uh, we shouldn't keep him waiting." Well, if that wasn't uh, as taxing this time. I suppose if you feel I'll do it we can head off it's taxing but time is of the essence Indeed. so um, this is the DM's way of telling you you have one chance before we start to move out of the city if there's anything you want to do yeah yeah, I'm ready to go. Very oh. good. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm good to go for now. Um, okay. Yeah. We shall head cool. off. Sweet. So you gather all of your belongings, uh, make the appropriate goodbyes, and head out to the elevator, which takes you some time to get there from the center of the city. You're no longer traveling carefully. Um, but it's still going to take you, um, roughly three or so hours to traverse all these stairways and pathways and whatnot. Uh, well, can we use the elevator now instead of the... Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're going to eventually get there, but I'm just saying it, it takes a lot of time to get to, through, you know, all this nonsense. Um, it's a very large city. So, but yeah, you get to the top eventually. And then you travel, um, yeah, the rest of the distance. Uh, actually, yeah, so it took you about, yeah, so you travel on foot along the road. Uh, and you get far enough that you think you can make it to, yeah, I actually need to know what you're doing. Are you making a stop to Belagost or not? Uh, yes. Okay, so well, you are traveling. That's on our way anyway. Yeah, not yeah. necessarily. Well, I mean, well it is. Could. That's how we got into the mountain. Yeah, we're. I'm gonna, just saying you we're could go in the same place we. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you could have gone around. You don't have to go. I mean, you could have gone through, through the, the wilds if you're trying to dodge the city. But well, the fastest way is to to Belly It road. is along the road. Yeah. yeah. But the roads could be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. If we see any trouble, we'll we'll duck. Um. Did you? make uh, any attempt whatsoever to like oops that's the wrong one to uh, like gather like any military to come with you or are you just shooting out by yourself uh, I, I'm going to assume they need as much military as they can muster okay time. so I, All right, sweet. personally I don't think we would have asked Damien uh, yeah so after you exit the primary hold of Volbrunder, which is lightly manned. Uh, you're outside. And uh, fresh air. has yeah. been a week. It's Indeed. It's uh, windy today, but not very snowy. The ground is snowy, but you know, it's not, it's not flurrying or anything. Um, and you guys begin to walk. Damien casts his first greater invisibility ever and you all blink out of existence or yeah. so it seems yep i just say uh nope stay on the path well uh, damien, damien on the hand uh you all, like a one a piece of his rope okay. like that's how you're gonna stick together okay um and you guys head off let's go Yep, you travel, uh, yeah, so you travel another five hours or so, and you reckon you can make it to Bella Ghost by tomorrow. Like a full day's travel, you can probably get there. All right. Okay. On foot. Um, I'm going to suggest that we travel a little ways off the path uh, mm -hmm. to sleep for the night. Yeah, that's fine. Even if he does Very well. his little hut. Yeah, he casts Damien's tiny hut um, a couple hundred yards off the road. Mm. And it's nice and warm in here after a long day's travel in the cold, frigid weather. It's great. It's like 70 degrees. 
you got yeah. lots of space to stretch your legs, you know, you can set up your bed rolls and whatnot and cook a hearty meal and enjoy your time together. Um, you notice after he casts Liaman's tiny hut, though, that you all blink back to visibility. So you it's an all or nothing thing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that if he can spell, you all lose invisibility. He has to be concentrated on this spell. Yeah. Um, just a point to notice for you guys. Um, yeah, so... The night actually passes uneventfully. Your hammer never has glowed uh, particularly strongly so far. Um, well, tonight, uh, while we're resting... Before I sleep, I'm going to sit down with it and attune myself. Mm -hmm. So, Great. I do that. I spent some time massaging my hammer. Mm -hmm. All right, you do that, and we awaken on the 13th of Ice Hall. And unless there's something we want to do, we push out to travel once again. Yeah. Say, no? Yes? Something you want to do? Um. How far would I know? Well, no. Never mind. I don't know anything. I don't know where it is, so. Uh, yeah, we're good. I was going to say maybe head back to that temple again, but you probably won't be able to find it from here, so. And I don't want to bother the party with the detour. Okay. So. All right, so you guys travel another eight hours invisible. Same routine with the rope and everything. Yeah, about eight hours pass, and you can see uh, the signs of the city in the distance. And you continue to approach, or do you just head the fuck around it? Um, yeah, I'm going to approach cautiously. Mm -hmm. I guess if we're still invisible, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll still be cautious, though. So. Okay. So as you approach the city, mm -hmm. um, I think... I don't, I don't know, you're gonna have to tell me what happens. For your character, but um, your worst fears are definitely realized as you realize Bella Ghost is a smoking ruin. Small lightly, or, sorry, what the hell? Snow lightly falls upon the ransacked, destroyed homes of this deserted ghost city as you're passing through it. Um, it's, it's just quiet as a grave. Uh, you're rather disturbed that you don't find a single corpse among the rubble. Only stains of blood, gore, and soot remain in the streets. Um, well, I guess I'm going to... Uh... Yeah. Walk to my family's house. To the shop. And take care of it. Alright, yeah. I mean, you make your way there, and... It's one of those things where it's like... Maybe seeing a zombie would be at least relieving. Like, yeah. you know, it'd be, it'd be something. It's like, at least we'd maybe get some closure, but you don't get a single thing. No undead, no survivors, mm -hmm. no rats, nothing. It's just quiet as a grave, the wind passing through the empty streets. No corpses, just blood. And you make your way to your family's home and, yeah, broken down door looks like a hasty exit or you know some sort of enemy passed through here but very clearly no one is here it's not entirely burned down or anything but yeah yeah okay um I just say well then well then we have to meet more let's go I mean, no one can see you, so Damien's just like, are you going to be okay? I will. 
Don't we must uh... we must remain vigilant in times like this. I, I can't have you if you need a moment, collect yourself. I do not. We'll be we'll be just fine. We have uh we have important business to take care of. Very well. Shall we camp here for the night? Perhaps it would be a way for you to say goodbye. And uh, I think we're all in for a bit of rest. Are we? Do we not have a little bit it's of It's been eight hours of travel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, As you grape your way into the city, tired. Ah. Uh, sure. Let's, we, we can... Uh, Let's uh, find a good place on the outskirts of the city. Okay. Uh, you guys can do that. Um, so you exit the city entirely, yeah. and yeah, he casts his tiny hut. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's not snowing at all. So it's another nice sunny day, but it's still kind of windy. Um, the sun's starting to set though now. And he casts his hut, and you all become visible once again. And, uh, we, yeah. No disturbances whatsoever throughout the night. Mm -hmm. Nice. And we wake up on the 14th of Ice Howl today. Uh, and you wake up to an extremely powerful blizzard overhead seems the snow has picked up and the weather conditions have turned drastically horrid since you fell asleep um but yeah that's uh, i think it's a good breaking point yeah uh, so we'll take a five minute break and come back soon cool deal all right are you close to music playing in the background no. <laughs>